PS5, that's perfect. We'll see if Apex 47 falls for it because I think he's one of the prime targets. Rose here put down a third of his health. Stormy just wailing away. Uh, something to note, a uh, save for Stormy, right? Save for Stormy. Apex 47 can make the most out of his passive as a Tigril. Like he is just tanking everybody for free. Like he has a little Dreadnought armor on in minute one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, there's plenty of physical damage dealers on the side of SRG. We're going to struggle a little bit in the earlier stages, but hey, let's see. Oh, oh. Alien in trouble. Tempest of Blades up. Going to fall here despite being underneath his tier one turret. And now Apex 47 fighting the good fight. SRG starting it quick. Yeah. I mean, the momentum and especially the rotations are really, really fast from the side of SRG. And I think that Apex 47 got the read just a little bit too late. But let's see if they find the trade. Here we go. TNZ pulls the trigger on the retribution. Pops Innocent. Gives a kill over to Sunshine. Unfortunate. And I mean, that's just the way it goes, right? Unless you have Flicker, that's the only way that you can dodge that alt. But with Purify, you're just going to have to tank it. Mm-hmm. All right. In hindsight, I think Firefox Esports walked away with a better trade. Uh, an XP laner for a gold laner? Sign me up. Now the turtle has spawned, it looks like they'll just continue the pressure on the alien. Like, they're going to deny or at least delay his level 4. Well, let's see how it goes out, right? Because, again, it is a trade for, like, yes, eventually you're going to scale into the later stages of the game. But do we need the power now or later? And I think that SRG kind of needs the power now, especially when they're trying to fight around these turtles, right? Yeah. That's the only way that Fireflux Esports is willing to kind of walk out into the danger zone. They need it and they want it, especially if they want to secure this first objective. Cram, ooh, put down a two-thirds of his health, gets a good amount of damage. And now Tianzi trying to burst him down. Turtle out a third of his health, Tempest of Blades up. Bicycai. Oh. All of the sorts. Has, has, has. Oh, he goes down. Alien says, you're welcome. And the pull by Yums. Gonna get taken down by Alien, though, despite all of that. And Stormy blasts Apex 47 with the turtle still standing. Yep. I mean, that was, I, I don't know what to say, but this is pretty profitable for Fireflux Esports. Because now, look, Tanti is able to power farm while all of these fights are going on. He's already level six. And now maybe he has an opportunity to start turning the tides for the rest of his team and maybe another gank on top side. But let's look at this, right? Because Stormy, technically, he would have clean, cleaned up this fight had he, uh, if he had more items. You're limited by the number of shots that you have in your pocket. Yeah. Uh, interesting how Stormy had all of those free hits, S yet despite that, Alien survived. And Alien got a couple kills on the way out, too. Uh, again, I give full credit to Brave Smite there. And, of course, just the uh, innate chunkiness of one. Oh, oh. I'm offended the pole. Tianzi goes down. No clap back. No retaliation from Fireflux Esports here. Now 3-3. Three to three. SRG definitely has the advantage here in the turtle take. Still standing. Cram and Yum's holding it. In goes the guys. Alien gets the vengeance. Proc in. Apex 47 down no fourth of his health. Getting hit by Stormy's spells. And now the turtle finally gets the attention that it wants and it needs. And there's another pull. Rosa in trouble. No. Rosa's going to go down here. Yum's gets the kill. Turtle still up. Sikai's with the red tree. Secured. Apex 47, where you going? SOD by Sunshine. Oh. Only Procket. The answer is no. Down goes Apex 47. Stormy gets a kill. Why? Yums as well. And Sunshine presses the button. But Rogo goes down just as quickly. I, I'm so confused. Why did he decide to take that? Why did he decide to take it? Was it worth that one kill? Nope. And I personally don't think so, right? I, I guess, yes, you are. You're technically 2-1-0 and oh as of right now, but Innocent is going to get a lot off of this. Luckily, at least for Fireflux Esports, there is some kind of level of compensation, right? We don't see Innocent hard shoving that lane, but Cram, now even further ahead. Yeah, please, Alien, keep trading against me. Until you get that Thunderbell, I don't mind. Yep, and we'll see exactly in the replay one more time how that happened, because I also need to replay. I want to see how quickly that happened. So where's the SOD? Why did he click it? Right here. Because I think he was getting frozen out of his lane. So he needed to participate elsewhere to get that mm. gold and be part of that fight. Kind of interesting how, well, indirectly Innocent is still part of the fight. Yep. Now Alien gets a hit here. That's 2v1, man. Oh. They're generating a lot of momentum for Cram, but it needs to translate into something. And most of the time, it is the Turtles. We'll see whether or not they're going to start swapping the lanes now that the gold plating has expired. Mm -hmm. uh, item check here. That's the Berserker's Fury already on Sekai's. Oh. And, oh. oh eh? Yeah. Qu yeah. Qu 
Queen, Queen's wings? Blood, blood wings, yeah. Blood wings. Yeah, I, I think it's rather interesting, right? He's not thinking about damage. He's also thinking about the survivability when he gets into the middle of these fights. This is the most roundabout way of building a sustainable Amon. <laughs> I mean, it's one way of doing it, right? Until we see the concentrated energy start popping up. Maybe even like <laughs> something even wilder oh. would have been like the uh, Clock of Destinies now that it's been changed. But for the time being, we are expecting to see a lane swap actually happen. And SRG, you can see the, uh, the, the rotations from Cram to be part of this turtle fight. Yeah. Yep, uh, he is going to be helping Stormy clear the wave here. Uh, one thing we haven't really seen is the, the user diversion, mm -hmm. right? Everything that Stormy's been doing has been very fair, has been in your face. So maybe they are going to try to set up for a uh, checkmate angle on this turtle. Again, we're only getting two turtles. Oh, Flicker there, committed by Alien. No one home, very defensively used. Apex 47 spots Innocent in the back. All right, TNZ. Ah, oh, he pulled out too far. It's a little tough to get into this fight here. Ooh. Not to mention oh, the level diff. Oh, wait, That's a on. soft reset. Turtle. Oh, oh, barely out of range. Gets the pull in and the implosion. Both tanks pulling no punches. Tempest of Blades up. Sunshine gets the SOD. Still no one home. Yums goes down. Tianzi served up a kill from Alien's final slash. Down goes Sikais. That's a double for Tianzi. And then another one falls. Cram, three for one, traded for Rosa. And Tianzi keeps going. Stormy. Oh, he gets it. That is a maniac. That's huge. That is so very huge. But now, I mean, Innocent, he's going to have to try here. Uh oh. Alien tracks him, finds the final slash, serves it up to Sunshine. He's not going anywhere. Mm -mm, the Thunder Belt makes him real tough to get through. Let's look at the replay one more time in this fight because honestly, Apex saved the entire situation. He caught both Sick guys as well uh, as well as Yubs, mm -hmm. and both of them were on top of TNZ. Had they, well, I, I guess maybe if uh, just the Ruby got pulled away, I'm pretty sure the Ling would have been able to take care oh. of TNZ. But now look at that, the momentum switches. Back. Here we go, Tempest of Blades up. The implosion saves Sunshine, but only for a second longer, turning it into a trade. It's not bad, but they're still trading effectively from the side of Fireflux as they continue forward. Tansy now reading out even more with the Holy Crystal. Look at that build. He's full of damage. Apologize to him now. Okay, I'm sorry, Tansy. I don't know your game, but now I do. 3-1 and 3. All right, he's done good work to use that shield to its most uh, efficient. Oh no, Innocent gets bursted down just when we were talking about him. Talk about, it's unlucky, it's unlucky. It's like power spike just achieved. Innocent is like, yes, I got the Berserker's Fury. Maybe I can clear this way fast. Yeah. Gets one shot instantaneously, right? And now you're seeing how Fireflux Esports have adapted from game number one. Instead of like, oh, we're gonna crush down on the mid lane. We're gonna keep on trading proactively. We're gonna play around uh, our mid laner and that should be enough. But no, no, we're attacking your gold laner. Innocent is punishable. He is human. And that's what our analysts mentioned. Fireflux Esports perform the best when they play with a little bit of their own flavor, right? When you force out the Amon and you play it up against public enemy number one, Ling, beautiful things happen. Apex 47 taking this amazing bush. And now the implosion catches Innocent, but only for a second longer. Final slash by Alien. I wonder if this is enough. Oh, no. I'm offended. In comes the Kais, down goes Alien. Apex 47 might be up next. The Divergence head up by Stormy. He goes through. Cram takes out Apex 47. It's a disaster for Turkey. Wait a minute, TNZ. Do they have they have no idea he's there? They have no idea he's there. Rosa just needs to get some more information. Here they go. SOD and in the back line, TNZ burst him down, cram! Turtle still standing. No Lord way. Is innocent scores it! And now TNZ's gonna go down. Sekai is taken out by Rosa. But here comes Stormy, the forward flicker. The gambit from Fireflux Esports doesn't pay off the way that they want to. They took two on the way out, but the Lord still goes over to the Giants. Man, what a tough decision to make there. Do you continue to put Innocent behind, or do you look to maybe get something off by killing sick guys? At the end of it all, SRG still walk away, uh, walk away with the Lord, which is the biggest problem, right? Despite trading upwards, Fireflux Esports can defend this, don't worry. But I think that Sunshine, he needs to scale Whoa! up fast. Oh my god. Rosa with a stone have offended the implosion oh, from oh Apex God. 47. Yooms down here as well. And all SRG was thinking was, we're going to stand behind the Lord, go in and push. They didn't expect to lose two so quickly. I mean, I wasn't expecting them to lose two so quickly, but even more, that could have been three. That honestly could have been four. Let's look at this replay. Hopefully they catch it right at the moment. Look at Innocent here. We see the implosion canceled straight away right on the frame. Innocent skedaddled as he should have. And then, again, damage control. 
SRG knows that, hey, this is a losing fight. They make nothing of that Lord. They didn't even get to push top lane tier one. I mean, that's the whole story between Firefox Esports and Slime and Red Giants. They're just nullifying each other's proactive moves with their own moves. This is this is a Yu-Gi-Oh matchup that you wouldn't have expected, man. Oh, here we go. The diversion play into that pixel brush. They try to spot out TNZ, but he knows better. Oh, wow. You're right. It, it's like um, one of those... Uh, You've fallen into my trap card moment. Yeah, into, or like a two pie. equally matched uh, dojo masters, you know? Like they own, they both own their schools of martial arts. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then they just like, like this two-minute long fight sequence where nobody gets hit in. I think, I think let's take it a step further. I think they're two very very young prodigies of their times in martial arts masters. I mean, let's look at the game facts here. As of now, of MSC 2024, I did not catch that in time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but, but there was a fact. There was a fact there. You guys, you guys can scrub back. Yeah, uh, we'll scrub back in just a little bit, but let's look at the in-game items and see Nets. whether or not uh, anything is a little different. We see the full Trinity build come out from the side of Sunshine at this point of time, but even so, we do see the alien. He's 5-3-3, three, and three, and honestly, he's pretty sustainable now that he has the Queen's Wings and the Thunderbell. Oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, he is, uh, I believe, on his way to an Oracle, mm -hmm. if not mistaken, uh... and... Uh... Yeah. But then why would he need to? Never mind. I think at this point, I, I think at this point, whatever he gets is going to be of value, right? He, he could opt to go for a little bit more uh, ma magic resist if he really wanted Defense. to. I think the best one by far, the most cost efficient item that you could go for at this point is probably just the blade armor, right? Because Innocent, he's scaling up pretty quickly. Just mad chunk. Uh, Tianzi picked up the winner crown there. And uh, he also picked up a Sky Piercer. That's what I picked up. That's what I saw there. So he wants to greet out again. Oh, ho, ho, sick guys. Respect it. Tempest of Blades just for the iframes. Wow. He heals back up. So Whoa! They find one. Humes gets hit by the implosion. Still alive. Alien gets the dash in the final slash. On to Stormy. Innocent down here from the flank. Kicks a few balls, Alien and Rosa's way. Now Cram gets spotted out, up against the wall. Gets bursted down by Genzi, oh. two for none. Fireflux Esports calling the shots, make it straight to the Lord. Oh my goodness, Genzi is so stacked up right now. Unless the guys can make the super play and just steal away the Lord by a drive-by, I, I don't think it's happening. Fireflux, nope. they push the momentum into their favor, and better yet, Slango Red Giants now getting a little hesitant with the way that they approach these fights. It's the cleanest pick off into a Lord take I've seen up against the Langora Giants in a long while. Mm -hmm. This this rarely happens. I have to agree with you. And now we're seeing the beauty of this Amon pick. Amon throws the ult on towards the guys after taking one single auto attack. The guys yep. has to use his own ult to survive. Yep, the guys isn't playing his game. He's playing Tianzi's game when that happens. Mm -hmm. This is a tough one. This is a tough one to crack. And I think that Farfox, they need to be able to set up a check. Oh, well, I mean, they've missed the checkmate angle, but they need to put a lot of damage here. They're not going to take that diversion, right? Yeah. Okay, just giving some extra information. Mm-hmm. And now, all waves synced in. Wow, Sunshine up top, three in mid, the Massive Lord down bottom, and there is about one-fourth left. Oh, forcing out a Wind of Nature proc from Innocent. Lord crashing into that turret down bottom, and Firefox Esports will continue to take away all the resources from SRG's jungle. And now, they penetrate the base. Oh, I'm offended. On to Apex 47, forcing a response. Implosion on the two, and the final slash. Pop in Yum's immortality. Oh, and now they're going even harder. So guys, he needs to reset off of this. Oh no, they do get one on the back foot as Cram gets punished, overextending the diversion play. Can they find it? That's three sent over. Sunshine's in trouble. Knows that there's danger of foot. Oh, Sekais gets bursted down one more time by Genzi. Sunshine takes out Stormy. Two defenders left versus three out in front. Yumes gets taken down by Rosa. Stolen what? Tempest of Blades. What? And with that, it's just Innocent left. Innocent versus three members of Fireflux Esports. And Innocent pushes him out. <laughs> the item swaps to deny the kill. Tianzi refuses to give away no! the attack. And the one shot on top of it. It doesn't end. Tianzi is coming out big time. All right. Tianzi has about two HP left. Cram the only one to defend. There's a big wave. Can he stop this? Or are we going to game three at one and one?